which is something that I've kind of like I've kind of realized with this new generation. They don't they don't go out as much as we did, or people like that were my age, right? That went out, you know, the whole night went to another club or just you know you went to three or four venues for the most part people tend to go to these bars and clubs to kind of get a bit of different atmosphere get out of the house meet new people if you're a guy or a girl you might want to pull whatever it may be and then they then do then they gather up whoever they're with at the bar and go back to whoever's house is free and then they continue the night on until the wee hours of the morning and everyone goes home but they tend to kind of do their main kind of party in a bar for the most part or like a cool pub which is why I've seen anyway especially in the area that I live in I'm sure other people have recognised it too I've seen a real big resurgence with people going into Weatherspoons and just hanging out before it was a little bit of like a, a an ironic hipster thing right people like will go to um, you know the, you know the kind of like hipster dude that wears white socks and Reebok classics they'd go to like Weatherspoons to kind of you know to feign this weird working class persona that they wanted to kind of you know perpetuate, you know, per, uh, perpetuate or present to the world but nowadays I'm seeing people actually enjoying going to Weatherspoons because it's quite a relaxed environment you know exactly what you're going to get there's loads of them dotting all around London and for the most part you can still get a bit sloppy in there right you, you can have, you can kind of have your own little fun in a corner somewhere in a booth somewhere chatting shit to a mate or to a couple of mates catching up uh you know whatever it may be and then you can continue the night as you want um, after that so i've seen that happen quite a lot and i think i realized when i was in that was in the free compasses that a lot of the people that were there were actually going there to party and then just going home so my kind of um, thought process for how a dj has to change and i've kind of kind of gained i kind of learned what to do now for the most part and again just in general the, the clientele is just younger isn't it? it's just younger clientele um and I wonder if all the stuff about um, as young as so they want obviously you know they want probably um, bigger beats. But I wonder if all this kind of if this reaction to club culture has been because of the licensing laws, because of the licensing law, right? Uh, that they've enacted now, where it's only affects new bars and clubs. But I assume it's going to affect the old ones too. It's going to ensure that they have to always apply for a late license in order to kind of have any night that's going to be worthwhile or make them any sort of money. I wonder if it's because of the licensing laws and I wonder if also it's because of the exorbitant prices that clubs in London charge for tickets to get into an event, right? Um, just in comparison, like yesterday, the other day, I tried to get into Fold, right? And it and it was £30 to get in, right? Um, tickets to the door because uh, Peter Impresco from ARAP, ARAP, how do you pronounce that? Um, the Romanian kind of label that Carlo Vero Lobos uh, kind of, you know, co-signed back in the day that's been going from strength to strength. He was playing at Fold. <laughs> And I know there's another good night coming up too, the Alien Tapes night people are really excited about. But anyway, let's just to say, yeah, Fold is a good place to go to. People like to go to Fold, no worries. So um, it cost £30 on a door to get into Fold, right? And that was, and essentially Fold is probably the only club in London that's open until 6am, really consistently. Um, for the most part, maybe apart from maybe I think Corsica Studios are open that late too, and maybe a couple of others, but it's not, it's not that many. So you kind of have to go, you're kind of limited to where you want to go to. Um, Plus, um, folders in Canning Town, so I had to leave Stratford to go there, so whatever. Travel is not, not an issue. But it's £30 to get inside, and it's a really popular nightclub, so it means there's going to be queues out there. Um, the security is incredibly heavy-handed. They've got, like, I don't know. I'm going to say they probably have 20 members of staff that are security. I'd say 20. There's, like, probably, like, five outside, maybe a couple of more inside, walking around and stuff. So it's, like, constant, constant patrol everywhere, right? So the atmosphere is a bit weird. But depending on the night, sometimes it can be good. Like, the first party I went to there was fucking insane. One of the best parties I went to in a long, long time. So because of that, I think people just can't be bothered, right? to go because it's just so uh, there's so much aggro involved you have to buy a ticket in advance it's not really cheap blah 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 and that's in the, that's in the comparison to like a place like Bergheim right which is um one of the most famous clubs in the world and for the most part you're only going to be paying like 15 euros at the door to see some of the best DJs play right now there is there is something to be said that maybe you know I'm sure Forward probably pays more rent than the Bergheim does in their place or that's salt malarkey it costs a lot of money to run a place I get all that stuff right but I just think the lack of um uh, the lack of being able to buy anything in advance really affects them. Um, or, no, the lack of having to buy a ticket in advance really affects how people go out. Because I even remember, I think that whether I think it was Into the Woods did, who promoted the night yesterday at, at the at Fold or the the other night, and it was quite a good idea because I think they did like a pre-event that they do Into the Woods, like so somewhere in the warehouse. Then they picked up from there and went to Fold, and then they were continue did another party in like quote unquote Into the Woods from like 7 a.m. on to in the morning, right? So it kind of, it was a 24-hour party, which was quite cool um, in three different locations. But I remember seeing on the event listing on Resident Advisor, 
um, they put that there weren't going to be any doors of any tickets on the door available to buy, which obviously I knew that wasn't true, really. Yeah, you could always buy a ticket on the door. But imagine that's the message you're sending out to people. You can't buy tickets on the door. You have to buy them in advance. You have to buy them in advance for a club night, which is different to gigs, right? Gigs in general are like after work. Um, they usually last for about four hours. You know who you want to see in advance. You're big fans of them. Um, and you you know you're not really taking chances because you know you know who you're gonna watch. It's a gig, usually one person or a couple of warm backs, warm, warm, warm backs. Like you know what you're gonna get. With a club night, you don't really know what you're gonna get for the most part, right? There is the proportion of people out there who actually go for the music is quite small. It's not that big, right? For the most part, people are just going just because they want to have a night out. I'd imagine so. I don't think everyone in those queues or in those places actually knows who the people are that are DJing. Some of them do if you're the big star power DJs. I think you do have a following. But I think for the most part, most club nights are just frequented by people that actually like the club by itself. Might like the prom- the promoters because they might have put on parties previously. They have a rep from university days. They just carry on. Or they're big fans of the DJs. So I think they kind of hurt themselves a little bit these places where they don't allow people to buy tickets on the door because effectively the general public the kind of random you know boys and girls out there that kind of want to just like party have a good time just extend the night they can't go because you know there's this barrier of like this high pricing right the club's closing really le- closing early um in all terms and purposes and the kind of unpredictability of the night itself right because most of the clubs in london really suffer um when they get popular really you know right like it's not really their fault but the bigger they get and the more popular they become, the the worse of a crowd they attract. And because London doesn't have a door picking policy, they are having and because the clubs have to close earlier, and because it just costs a lot of money to run one, uh, they're having to accept they're having to uh, allow these people into their club who don't necessarily get the vibe, not necessarily about the music, in order just to kind of like uh to stay afloat. And you know, again, twofold problem. It's not anyone's particular fault, but I just thought that was an interesting kind of observation, having been in free compasses and seeing a lot of kids just like hanging out at the bar and just wanting to just chill there and then going home later and you know, uh, having a good time with their friends in their houses as opposed to like going to get an Uber and jumping because this doesn't work anymore. Imagine like imagine being a group of friends and I'm telling imagine we're in a pub and I'm telling and I'm the one in the group saying, Hey guys, let's let's all spend fifteen pounds um each to go to a nightclub that's like 40, 30 minutes away um, to a night that you none of you guys know about so we can continue partying. They'll be like, no, why don't we just go back to mine and, and, and get some drinks? All right? It's Because at the end of the day, you want to hang out with your friends anyway. It doesn't really matter where you are, right? It's, you could be in a fucking uh, car park for all it matters. As long as you're your mates and you have a, you have some laughs, it doesn't really matter where you are. So the nightclub thing isn't a best idea, especially if you have to travel quite far to go to some of the better ones that are open late, especially when you have to pay them such a high entry fee, especially when the clubs close late, um, early, sorry, uh, considering to some of the other places that you've been to. I just don't know how it's going to sort itself out. I think there needs to be a relaxing of the laws, I think, and then I think that was going to help everyone in terms of the opening hours. I just don't see how they're going to make it sustainable. I know Printworks do a good job of doing it now, but that's a big operation, right? Like That's a big, big space. Um, and they're having to kind of probably put on a few, and they probably, I don't know if they're making a lot of money out, outside of the club nights by kind of leasing it out to like, you know, uh, marketing and advertising companies that might do car adverts and shit and all that stuff for Malarkey in and around the space or with other private clients. But um, I don't know how sustainable it is. We, it, it, it means that we probably won't have another dance tunnel, right? Um, in general, like we won't have space like that. Like I know um, the glove that fits probably do a good job of that, right? Like a little niche kind of bar that has a niche bar that has like a little cool club down basement club downstairs. Um, but I assume maybe they can kind of pay for it because it's just like a cafe in the, in the daytime that's quite popular in the area. I don't know. Um, I wish to see what happens because I would, I would love for us to have another dance tunnel, another spot that you could just rock, rock up to any time of the week um, during, the, sorry, during the weekend, pay like 10 to 20 quid, um, see great DJs play and then go home, right? With a great crowd. But I don't sure we're going to ever have that again, man. Uh, or plastic people and stuff. So it's just like those, that era's gone. It looks like we're only going to have like weird kind of kooky spots that kind of live in a bit of a bubble and then mega clubs, right? And the mega clubs are just operating on just like everyone's allowed in um, uh, kind of MO in the hope that people spend money at the bar and other things. But I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting kind of just to be at, but um, for me in general, in my position, I have an interesting place to play. It's just a spot to play because I just get to play in front of like a cool kind of audience. I just want to have a good time and, and party in the area and then kind of go home and do whatever they want to do. 
So that's kind of a good position, I feel. So that was good uh, on Friday. And then on Saturday, I did like a last minute gig at the Leighton Star. First time I've been there. Leighton Star is a bit different to the Heathcote Star. It's around the corner from where I live, but it seems like that that pub is frequented by more young people than the Heathcote Star, which makes sense maybe because I guess later, I guess the Heathcote Star is closer to Leighton Star, which is more of a kind of young adult crowd, like the kind of Stokey mum and dad have moved over there because the houses there are cheaper. So a lot of kind of like, you know, uh, parents in like their late to early 40s, late, late 30s, early 40s with like one kid, a dog and shit. They kind of live in the Heathcote Star area, but then it looks like the Leighton area is frequented by a few more hipsters. Even when I left um, the Leighton Star after I finished my set, um i saw a lot of people coming out of the station that kind of looked similar to me and etc and people that i know um but essentially that that set was quite cool good kind of good time there um if anything had a bit of a hiccup in the, in the beginning couldn't there was no uh link cable for the cd for the cdjs but luckily these days i've been luckily these i've always kind of bring a backup usb with me so i can have like two usbs on on the cdjs uh, that kind of helped, but you know these little things the DJ ones are always up there. Really. There's always something that goes wrong. I have to use a new mixer I've never used before. CDJs are a bit dodgy, like it's all, all all up in the air. But in general, kind of sorted it out. I got it done, and here we are, man. Here we are. Any